confusion of 10 o'clock because we have been sometimes meeting at 10 o'clock. But this is a special meeting uh, which was supposed to start, or I mean, to be on Wednesday. And then we took the meeting to today, nine o'clock. And the, that was the instruction to the secretary. And I saw the first interaction from the secretary made mention of nine. I don't know where this 10 o'clock emanating, but you are all welcome, honorable members, and welcome to the members of the staff. And the, our meeting is supposed to be very short today. Uh, if it's an hour, it will be delayed. Otherwise, it's supposed to be very even less than an hour. The first thing in this meeting, we're supposed to, 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 to deal with the program, including uh, the minutes uh, of the previous meetings that we could not. But having checked at the members that are here, we're still not making a quorum. Let me count again how many members that are here. It's one, two, three, four, five. We're still short of one or two members so that we can claim to be a quorum. Uh, for now, I think Chair, while we still... Hello? The meeting is correcting. It's correcting? Yes. Oh, okay. Then let's go to the minutes then of the previous meeting, sir. Excuse me, Chairperson. Chairperson, sorry, I apologize. Good morning. It's Farad Esak. Could we please uh, ask the Secretary to record the apology of Honorable Kachalia, please? Thank you. Yes, I was supposed to, to ask the Secretary to start with the minutes, I mean, with the apologies first. Secretary? Uh, uh, Chair, yeah. Um, as recorded, the apology of um, Mr. Kachalia, who is overseas until um, the time when he comes back. Uh, however, I haven't received any other apology for today's meeting, Chair, from the members. Chair? Okay, continue with the second part. Chairperson. Okay, there's somebody's calling Chairperson. Hello. Hello, Chair. How are you? Uh, this Honorable Gomani, please note the apology of Honorable Maotwe. Uh, thank you, Honorable Gomani. Secretary, did you capture that? Uh, capture, Chair. Okay. Then go with the business of the day, sir. Okay, I'm going to start quickly with the minutes first, Chair, then we do the oversight report. Okay, go ahead. The first minutes, Chair, is the minutes of the 24th of August, 2022, which was the Alexco annual report and financial statements presentation. Um, on the front page is the attendance of the members of the committee who were present in the meeting um, and the delegation of the DPE that was led by the deputy minister at the time uh, and the new leadership of Alexco and a brief uh, opening remarks of the chairperson and input by the Deputy Minister of Public Enterprises, uh, Pumula, uh, Mr. Mashwale. And then the presentation um, that, was, that was done by uh, the Ms. Hano Kom, who was the interim chairperson of, board chairperson of Alexco. Then, um, some of a, just a summary of the issues that were raised by the members of the committee. And then the responses 
of the committee of the uh, Alexco, and then the adoption of the minutes of the 1st of June, 2022. And the, uh, the minutes of the 8th of June, 2022, also in adoption of the third term, the draft third term program of the committee, which took the decision that we must uh, uh, finalize the issue of the Quebec power station. That was the first, that was the meeting of the 24th of August. Eh? Thank you. Can I go through, go through all the minutes? It will be faster. Yeah, you can do that. I think, uh, let me check with the minutes. Can you just put all the minutes uh, and then adopt them at the same time? Can I get hands there? Chair, whichever route, whichever route you take will support it. Okay, Honorable uh, Lamini. I second that proposal, Chair. Let's proceed. It will save a period of time as well. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Members. Go ahead, Secretary. Okay, thank you, Chair. And uh, thank you for the, the committee also for allowing me some time off. Uh, and thank you for Yandi Swatrele for standing in for me. Uh, during this period of the minutes uh, of the meetings when I wasn't around. Uh, this is the meeting, the minutes of the 7th of September, 2022, uh, briefing by transit on the annual report and financial statements for 2021, 2022 financial year. Those are the members of the committee who were present in the meeting and um, the DPE delegation leading the Transnet delegation. And uh, We've also got the opening remarks by the chairperson on the second page and the presentation of Transnet on the annual report and financial statement for the 2020-2021. Introductory remarks by the group CEO of Transnet, Ms. Poshia Derby. The discussions, just a summary of the discussions. And the responses that were given by Transnet in the meeting. And then, uh, um, the, the resolution that Transnet uh, should well submit information on the economic multiplier effect on the investments that Transnet makes. Uh, that was the meeting of Transnet chair. And then the next minutes are the minutes of the 14th of September. This was the, the briefing by the business rescue practitioners on the status update regarding the rescue process of Mango. Uh, this was on the 14th of September. These are the members of the committee who were present in that meeting. Uh, um, including the apologies, uh, the delegation of a DPE was led by the deputy minister and the acting director general. We also had the interim uh, board chair of SAA, who is uh, Professor Lamola. And then number one deals with the opening remarks of the chairperson. And then the presentation was done by the deputy director general of the Department of Public Enterprises, Advocate Makobe, on behalf of, uh, um, instead of the rescue practitioners, and then the discussions are summarized in the uh, pages. It's quite detailed. And then the responses.
Yeah, and then number five deals with the resolution that the committee took for this particular meeting. That the committee resolved that there, there are contradictions within the Companies Act that needed the committee to look at. And then the content advisor should look at legis the legislation and advise the committee. The committee should have a joint sitting with the Portfolio Committee on Trade and Industry and Competition as they are responsible for policy and legislation affecting state-owned state -owned companies. The business risk practitioner should table a report on the finances of Mango and how that has been used. The committee would appreciate a written reply by Mango. That was the meeting of the 14th of September, uh, 2022. The next um, minutes are the minutes of the 21st of May to of September. No, I, I think that those are these are all the minutes that we have table chair for now. Thank you, Chair. Several. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, that is the presentation of the minutes. Could can I have somebody to move the minutes for the adoption. Chair. Yes, Honorable Commander. Yes, Chair. I move the adoption of the meetings or of the minutes as respectively presented to us as a committee. Thank you, Honorable Commander. Is there any second, uh, Honorable Members? Any second, uh, Chairperson? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, let me leave the DA to second. That's nice. Uh, let me, yeah, let me allow Isaac, uh, Chairperson. Thanks. Honorable Isaac. Honorable Chairperson, I firmly believe that Honorable uh, Shabalala is my senior, and I think. Uh, Perhaps the honourable thing to do is to allow ladies first. Uh, so, Mashabalala, please. It's good to have your name on record. <laughs> no, Chairperson, I, I, I will second it. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Chairperson, this is history. This is history in the making. Let's comment, Honourable Isaac. The DA is never seconded. Well done. Kachalia must not come back. Thanks. <laughs> no, no, no. It's because they, <coughs> the opposition doesn't <laughs> want it to remove it in Jobek. That's why. So we're trying to appease you. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. You are, you, are, you are provoking me to remind you we have not been in the meeting for some time. Just allow the meeting to take place properly. Because uh, I'm attending the whips, yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, the, the secretary for the, uh, the, the oversight, what is it called? The... The visit to other places and all that program. Who is making presentation, Secretary? Chair, I'm going to present on the on the report, and then uh, Lee Bramwell, Ms. Lee Bramwell, will present on the other issue of the program regarding the the study tour, the visits. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, she will she will end after the adoption of the report. Yeah, uh, this is the portfolio. This is the report of the portfolio committee on public enterprises uh, for on the oversight visit to ESCOM, SAA, S Express Airways, and Denel, uh, dated 30th September. 30th September is today's date, the date that we report we we adopt the report. Um, the the basically the introduction is that we uh, visited these uh, uh, entities in Cape Town and Gauteng respectively. Um, we've, and then that was from the 19th to the 22nd of April, 2022. In terms of the background, um, just to say that the state-owned enterprise enterprises are under serious operational governance and financial stress, and they have been, uh, uh, others are facing liquidation such as Mango and Express Airways, which has already finished. And then 
I'm just we're just uh, there in the in the in the background, given a synopsis of the challenges facing Danelle in terms of in its inability to uh, to 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 honor its contractual obligations and even paying salaries of workers as they express the process of liquidation. And the committee needed to get a progress report with regards to that liquidation process. In terms of SAA, it had, it had then uh, uh, concluded a equity partnership pro, uh, agreement and resumed its operations. So the committee would, needed to familiarize itself with the performance and the new business model of SAA. And then the committee also had received a complaint from NUM regarding the irregularities at ESCOM in, re in relation to the contract of the replacement of the steam generator. Hence, the committee had to also go to Quebec power station. And then the delegation of the committee was as thus at 1.2. And then the visit to Quebec power station was our first stop at number two. Um, that the committee actually, that was the purpose of the visit, was to actually to oversee, to, to look at the activity, to see the activities at the plant, but also get an update on the national power grid uh, and also be briefed by Noom on the allegations of irregularities. That took place on the 19th of April. It was a joint with the Portfolio Committee on Mineral Resources and Energy. Um, the, the CEO of ESCOM and his leadership, they joined the committee through, through a virtual platform. They were not present at the oversight. Uh, and then they also made some welcoming remarks. And then some of the issues that were that were uh, uh, raised there, it was regarding the load shedding. And at that time, we were there on the 19th. The, there was a, the country was on stage four load shedding, which was uh, implemented on the 19th of April, 2022. Uh, and then that, 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 that is just a background on what ESCOM had actually uh, explained to the committee in terms of why there was no shedding in the country at the time. And then in terms of the maintenance, um, um, it was explained to us that the, the utility does not have enough capacity to implement the plant maintenance. Uh, the situation was compounded by the last independent power producer contract being concluded in 2014. So they say they, they were trying basically informing the committee that um, the fact that we have not been um, um, taking more APPs, it's the reason that there is load shading. It's one of the reasons that were, that were uh, conversed with the committee. And then also they spoke of the damages at the candle and we in 2018 and 19, 2018 and 2021 respectively, and many other power stations. And then uh, in terms of the mitigating uh, interventions that the, CEO, the GCO had reported at the time that there is a need for policy decisions to be taken, uh, also amending the contracts by the IPP office to ask for, for them to access uh, 200 megawatts from existing IPPs, uh, also to re removing bottlenecks, additional 200 megawatts available by upgrading infrastructure. Uh, also, the NARSA should simplify the registration process for installation of 100 megawatts and under. And then in terms of the financial sustainability, ESCOM liquid, ESCOM's, uh, the utilities liquidity constraints can be alleviated if the municipal debt amounting to 47 billion can be paid to ESCOM. That's one of the issues that ESCOM canvassed that that's how they are able to deal with the issue of the liquidity of ESCOM. And then in terms of the submission of NUM, uh, it was led by the full-time substitute, Mr. Mvovo, who actually um, presented as to why uh, the union was against the suspension of the replacement of the steam generator. And they also raised the issue of the, um, the, the contract being mismanaged and that the, the deferment of unit two actually was depriving the ESCOM from 900, 900 megawatts of electricity. Um, and then they believe that the, the decision to, to suspend that particular uh, uh, thing was not due to ESCOM's failure to be ready, but actually it was because of the contractor, which was from, from at home, which is a French, French uh, uh, company. And then in the report, we are listing all the issues that Noom have said, just a synopsis of what they have presented. And then ESCOM's response to Noom presentation, um, 
of ESCOM did uh, 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 um, uh, con con uh, conceal that they are losing skilled uh, staff, especially nuclear operators. And ESCOM was unable to offer increases, bonuses, et cetera. That was one of the reasons not be being unable to retain staff. Uh, in terms of the SGR, ESCOM re responded that the SGR outages were being operated safely and, S and Kubek never led maintenance over the years. And then the, 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 and the entity was not being reckless and that the deferment of the SGR of Unit 2 would not lead to job losses. Um, the meeting actually did not, the, the, this oversight visit did not finish the discussions on the, on the nuclear, on the issue of the nuclear power station, which was school back and the issues raised by us, by Noom. Hence, the committee had to take a decision that we'll have, we'll have, um, um, subsequent meetings to deal with the issues. That, however, the committee did undertake an aside visit on the plant to look at the, 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 the construction of this unit two of uh, Kubek power station that was off, off the grid. And then the resolutions that were taken at the, at the Queen, the committee was unable to fully engage on the complaint of Noom and the presentation of ESCOM and hence a decision was taken that um, a follow-up meeting should be held. And then on the 30th of August, a, a joint follow-up meeting was held to afford ESCOM a, response, a, a, a opportunity to respond. However, ESCOM had not responded to the allegations citing that the issues were labor-related and ESCOM is not obliged to respond to them. Then the committee, the joint committees also resolved again that ESCOM need to come back and submit a written response which was submitted to the committee, and that meeting was held on the 27th of September, 2022. And then the observations of the, of the committee uh, in relation to what has transpired, the committee noted with concern that the reported delays and alleged corruption regarding the steam generator replacement project at Quebec nuclear power station, and then the allegations by the union that the contractor from our home responsible for the replacement of the generator has not delivered on its contractual obligation, However, it continued to be paid. It also noted that the allegations uh, that managers were responsible for the steam generator project were suspended to protect French-based company. In terms of the recommendations, having engaged both ESCOM and NUM, the committee's resolved to embark on a follow-up visit to, power, to, to the power station for an in-depth investigation on the serious allegations of corruption at the plant. Uh, in terms of the meeting with the liquidators of the Southern Express Airways, the committee did meet with the business rescue practitioners. Um, um, in fact, we met with the Department of Education, Department of uh, uh, Public Enterprises led by the DDG uh, advocate Makobe. And then the committee was taken to in terms of the status of the provisional liquidation of S Express. Um, also in terms of how much of the total proceeds from the total from the disposal of the company assets. Uh, was received, which was 24 million uh, 748,700. Um, and then the intangible asset sale is still was still underway at the time. The sort of, in terms of the employees of Southern Express Airways, it was also reported that the, the, the employees' claim documents have been completed. The claim will be um, against the, com the company and payable from the free residue of the liquidation and distribution account. And then this will be done at the end of the, uh, the, the liquidation process. And at that stage, the liquidators did not foresee a dividend payable to the concurrent characters. Um, they also reported that uh, by the 20th, 28th of April, 2020, the granting of the provisional order, the employee salaries um, were outstanding for, for March and April, 2020. 2020. Uh, and then all these uh, outstanding uh, salaries will be dealt with against the company, which is South African Express Airways, at the, at the end of the, uh, the thing. However, we were informed that the UIF and the, and the TERS, which is a temporary employee relief scheme, were paid and received by the employees. And then they were just giving us a... a, 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 a a update in terms of how far they are in terms of implementing the issues of the pensions and 
uh, retirement funds for employees. And then progress that has been taken, and progress in terms of action that has been taken, um, the issue of the sale of the critical the material assets of the airline was complete. Uh, section 417 and 8, inquiry into affairs of the airline was ongoing. Uh, so it's just a, 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 a synopsis of the a table of what has been done and what was still outstanding in terms of the thing, in terms of Express. And in terms of the findings of the committee, uh, the committee noted that there is a prog there is progress in terms of the liquidation process. However, was concerned that the timelines has taken longer than anticipated, and then Sachs was not had no funding post the PRT, PRP process uh, that needed to be liquidated. The committee noted how the state capture has, this, has, has this established SOC's governance operationally and financially, or this state capture has destabilized the SOC's governance operationally and financially, and then noted that uh, according to commissioner's uh, findings, there is evidence of reckless trading at South African Express. There were challenges where the, with the initial beta in raising the balance of the purchase price to fund the purchase of the airline. Uh, noted that fair value of the intangible assets is as valuable as whoever is willing to pay for it, value, value, valuation was based on the intention uh, to sell the airline to a party willing to capitalize. It is not transferable and requires government consent. The sale of the of, of intangible assets is the responsibility of SATs. In terms of the recommendation, the committee recommended that the Minister of Public Enterprise should, ensure, should consider ensuring that the liquidation process is done in a transparent manner ensuring that there is clear communication among stakeholders about the liquidation process, uh, ensure that the, process, the systems are put in place to ensure that uh, no other state entity would go through this particular process. Um, in terms of the oversight to South African Airways, the committee visited uh, the Airways Park and we met with the leadership of uh, SAA, and the, it was mandated to get a progress update on the state of the, the sale transaction with Takato Consortium. Um, which also briefed us uh, because Mango is a subsidiary of SAA. So the table over there just gives us a, a, a report in terms of how far they are in terms of S S uh, Mango. Then in terms of the strategic equity partnership, uh, that uh, 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 the, the expression of interest uh, was published on December, the 2nd of December. Uh, 2021 uh, and closed on the 20th of December 2021 with 10 applicants. Um, and then the six were shortlisted with due diligence commenced until the March 2022. In terms of uh, the human resources, um, this is just a, 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 a the group has a total of 786 employees, 50 employees at cargo until outsourcing is finalized. And it also gives us a, a, a report in terms of all the divisions of, of SAA, uh, how they streamed the employees to the level at which they can afford as reported. And also in terms of air chefs, uh, what is their mandate and uh, in terms of what is, uh, they're going to do to ensure that they are profitable and efficient. Uh, in terms of the progress on the strategy, uh, Air Chefs is expected to be profitable from February 2022. And then they are basically uh, going to be ensuring that they are working with British Airways and Virgin, Virgin Airlines, and also ensuring that there's also non airline uh, customers such as Transnet and Shell who are able to buy from Air Chefs. Um, in terms of SAA technical, um, this is a, a, a also one of the, uh, the, 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 the subsidiaries of SAA, which is still um, 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 full intact. And then they are doing a full service maintenance repair and overall of, of airlines. They are also uh, uh, will be working with the other airlines to ensure that they are give the servicing uh, other airlines from other uh, uh, airlines within the SADC region. And then this is just a, 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 a report on what is it that they're doing to ensure that the SAA technical is able to be profitable.
And then just a report on the SAA fleet plan uh, in terms of what is it that they are operating with now, which they reported that they've got a three A319 flight uh, uh, aircraft, two A320s, and one A330 on a power by the hour lease agreement, uh, which they reported that they only pay for the hours that they have been on the on uh, 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 on operation. If the if the if the aeroplane does not fly, they don't pay for the hours that the aeroplane was not flying. So that is what they explained as the power, uh, hour by the power lease agreement. Um, we're just giving a, a a report in terms of how they they wish to increase the air, the flight the, the 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 fleet plan and also the 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 the, the frequency of the airline. Uh, strategic equity partnership. Uh, government, they also give us a report in terms of how this came about in terms of government taking a decision uh, that SAA needed to be saved and not liquidated. Hence, they are taken to get a, a, a strategic equity partnership. And then uh, we also, they also give a, a synopsis in terms of how the process had actually unfolded, had unfolded and what informed the, the SEP. Mm, and at the time that we were at the oversight, this particular process has, was not finished yet. In terms of the process of selection of the SCP, uh, we have also given a, a phase one, phase two, phase three, in terms of um, the e e o EOI um, uh, evaluation, uh, the proposal development, and the implementation in terms of the uh, strategic equity partnership process. And then um, as a result of the extended duration of the pandemic and its impact on both global and domestic aviation, some of the parties who had, had interest had, could not provide capital required to provide for the airline. And there was fewer people. And then that is how they are explaining in terms of how Takato Consortium was formed by these entities. And uh, E on that particular, on the slide there shows that uh, how, who are the people, who are the companies that forms part of the consortium. In terms of the findings of the committee, they are, they are listed over there. I'm not going to go into each and every one to save the committee time. In terms of the recommendation that the committee recommend that the Minister of Public Enterprises should ensure that, uh, should consider ensuring that the satisfaction of all the conditions precedent and regulatory approvals are met for the conclusion of the transaction. Then the committee also visited uh, uh, Denel, Headquarters at Centurion, uh, jointly with the portfolio, with the uh, with the um, standing committee on uh, appropriation. Basically, uh, we were briefed by the meeting was also attended by AMSCO and Denel and the and the standing committee on and and the standing committee on appropriation. So the committee was briefed on the uh, South African defense industry risk occasioned by a plethora of challenges experienced, exposure and reliance on Denel, AMSCO's capacity to deliver on defense contracts, and the assessment of the risk of risk to South Africa's sovereignty uh, in the event credit guarantees are enforced by respective lenders. Uh, in terms of the current state of Denel, um, basically the committee was uh, blatantly informed that uh, Denel was technically insolvent, at the time of the visit, because the available cash was insufficient to meet the operational requirements, including the payment of salaries and suppliers. And then the latest cash flow projections for the 2020-21-22 financial year indicated a negative 600 million if no mitigation was undertaken. Uh, um, so that was the kind of that was the the the, 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 the financial position of SAA that was presented. And everything has been stipulated in that particular section. And also in terms of the outstanding tax payments and salary status, uh, the current status, tax, tax status for the group is non-compliant due to the substantial tax liability that remained unpaid at the time. In terms of AMSCO uh, program penalties um, on 6.1.9, that uh, there were many penalties that were enforced by SARS. Uh, due to the inability of Denel to deliver on his contractual obligations uh, in terms of what was supposed, what in terms of the agreement between SARS, um, Denel, and AMSCO. 
in terms of the legal matters, uh, Daniel is currently defending the following legal matters. And those were the legal matters that have been identified at 6.1.11, 12, 13, and 14. Um, these are both uh, employee related and also supplier uh, supplier uh, and, and related. In terms of the funding challenges of uh, of of of, of, of uh, Denel, uh, the significant restructuring cost is required uh, for implementation of the new operating model. In addition to operating requirements, whilst the new model is implemented, um, so. ESCOM, uh, Daniel uh, reported that they will need, they will require approximately 3.7 billion immediately to deal with the obligations of the new model, implementing the new model. And a further 900 million is, was required over the next 24 months to complete the turnaround plan of Daniel. Um, so that is just the, the, the what is it that the, 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 the Daniel had reported in terms of what they require in terms of the financial backing from the state. Uh, in terms of the findings, the non-payments of salaries concern regarding uh, uh, penalties due to inability to deliver on contracts, concern on the technical insolvency of Daniel and the fee of the entity being liquidated. Lack of cooperation between UNSCO, Defense and Daniel are some of the issues raised in the presentation. The need for, for Daniel and AMSCO to open the market for youth, women, and people with disability in the procurement space. So there is a deficit of over 500 million on the funding of the corporate plan. There is a restructuring process in place. All the six divisions will be converted into business units and reduce the management structure of each business unit. Uh, so these are some of the uh, the 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 the. the uh, 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 the, what is it? I'm running out of words. The and then when you look at the recommendation of the committee in terms of the uh, the NEL visit, uh, that the Minister of Public Enterprises should consider presenting to the committee the future sustainability of the NEL, um, uh, ensuring the resolution of all outstanding payment to employees, suppliers, and creditors present to the committee the financial requirement of the entity over the medium term expenditure framework. That was the last part of the pro of the report. Uh, it was quite a long chair. Uh, it's, that, that's where the report ends, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mutumi. Honorable members, that is the report and the, is for engagement so that we, at the end of the day, we adopt it. But I'm not sure, Mr. Mutumi, whether we add the Liz part before we continue. Uh, Chair, I would advise that we conclude this one because Liz one, it speaks to something different to this. Okay. We can adopt this one, for, uh, then we can go to the next issue. Okay. Let us engage this report, uh, honorable members. Uh, I will not take hands. I will just go through the list in front of me, as usual. And uh, we'll start with Honorable Shabalala. Honorable Shabalala. Yes, Chairperson. Yes. Um, yes. 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 Uh, I would like uh, to second. Uh, Chairperson. And uh, did I come back with this day? Oh, I come back home. Oh, oh, that and the and the second and the thing would see up on it. Who I was second. You are the first person to. Oh, that okay. That I know. All right. It. In fact, with the report. Okay. Thank you so much, Chair. Chair, I would like to uh, agree with the contents of the report as raised by the Secretary and summarized as such. Uh, but just to also maybe to emphasize uh, that issue around uh, what, we, what we said to the department, for them to look into an option that says that if the Gatso Consortium does not gain fruition or the contract doesn't go through, the state should look into uh, taking back SAA back to the state. You can 
can put it in nice English, uh, Mr. D- uh, Mukumi. But I think that's the point I want to raise in the report. But I'm comfortable with it, Chairperson, and I therefore move for its adoption as read and raised. Uh, thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you, Honorable Shabalala. Uh, Honorable Isaac. Chairperson, thank you. Um, I was unfortunately uh, not part of the uh, oversights uh, that were discussed, uh, so I think it wouldn't be fair for me to comment at this point. Thank you, Chair. Okay, understandable. Uh, Honorable uh, Komani. Net. Honorable Komani. Uh, Honorable Komani, you put me in the lap, eh? Um, when we go on a trip, we see many things. Honorable Komani, we are robala, che. We are robala. Able to engage the report. Uh, many a media go. Honorable Kumed. Honorable Kumed. Chair? Yes, sir. Yeah, Chair. Gori, as um, a member who did not uh, attend the oversight. However, having found the issues, uh, I, I will focus or, or on Dinel. Items that have been raised, is that we currently are discussing. So as a result, I'll be happy with the contents of the, uh, the presentation as well as hoping that when we revisit Dinel, some of the issues and will in fact be reaffirmed. So all what I'm saying, Chair, uh, I'm happy with the report. Thank you. Okay, Honorable Commander. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Honorable Kwangwa. Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, you will recall that I only joined the, the oversight uh, via the state Standing Committee on Appropriations when we visited Denel. Uh, so I want to understand, since I was part of 25% of the oversight visit, was I absent or present in the context of the report itself? Uh, <clears throat> because I'm not part of the delegation. I know it was a delegation of public enterprises, but I joined you in, in Jobek. But there's one issue, Chair, with respect to Denel that... Uh, uh, that we have raised sharply in the in that meeting, and I think even in the recent meeting where we had Dinel, virtually we also raised it is the their over reliance on the sale of non core assets, as their turnaround strategy. Where we were saying that there doesn't seem to be a clear plan and clear strategy with respect to uh, making sure that they are able to turn around the business without relying uh, solely on on the sale of non core assets. But I do think uh, perhaps that could feature prominently in the report itself. Uh, but also, Chairperson, I think that uh, since we have picked up their use of, I mean, ever since I became a member of public enterprises, every time you even raised this thing, I think you even amplified it, amplified the point during the oversight after some of us made interventions that we usually are told about these uh, pipeline businesses, staggering figures which are never realized. I think we need to find a way uh, of keeping track of that so that we hold them to account because it proves once again that in the turnaround strategy. Honorable Zamini. Uh, thanks, Chair. Morning, colleagues. Uh, I think I was not uh, part of the oversight visit uh, because uh, we were uh, deployed. Elsewhere, Gulen Flat in Kaiser 10. 
So I wouldn't comment much on the oversight part of the report. Uh, but I, I, I will rely on, on, the, on, on those that were present and I will then support uh, whatever they say in that regard. Uh, however, on other aspects of, of the reports that need to be adopted, where I was present, I, 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 I'm fully behind that. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Um, Piri, Honorable Piri. Thanks, Chair. Morning to yourself. Morning to colleagues in the platform. Hey, Chair Gunzima, I'll have to join colleagues in not and in passing uh, the report. As much as even myself, I was not part of the oversight. Thanks, Chairperson. We agree. Even though I was not part, I don't have a comment. Thanks, Chair. Okay, Honorable Shabalala Wakona. Um, I was just putting up a recommendation that I forgot about um, uh, the competition commission. We did a light that would want to host them as the portfolio committee and so that we can understand the issues of regulations and what's taking them so long. That's just a point that I thought that it needs also to be captured. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Shabalala. Uh, going back to you, Honorable, I think I've mentioned everybody. I gave everybody the chance, né? Uh, because Honorable uh, Komani is not yet back here. Okay. Um, Honorable uh, Mr. Machumi, among the recommendation, I don't, I didn't hear you. You will correct me if I'm wrong. Or oh, particularly in all these uh, uh, SOEs that are troubled, uh, whether it's, in fact, all of them, whether it's ESCOM, Transnet, uh, uh, Dinell, you, you, you can mention all of them. There is this problem of public and public partnership. I think we made an emphasis on that, that some of the problem in relation, to, especially to the issue you raise, uh, that we also raise sharply, where Dinell and the Department of Defense is not coming uh, to, the, to, 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 to assist when it comes to procurement, and the, they will uh, procure somewhere else instead of helping Dinell, you know, meaning that Department of Defense, Department of Police, and all these departments that are supposed to procure from uh, Dinell are actually contributing to destroy Dinell. Therefore, we emphasize the committee at some point that we need the government, particularly the Department of Public Enterprise, to push for and uh, deepen this problem, uh, I mean, I mean to, to deepen this uh, public and public partnership, so that uh, we don't have a situation where the same entity uh, is being uh, undermined by other entities. You will take it in Transnet, vice versa, other mode of transport, whether it's, a, it's Department of Transport and other departments that will not get uh, things that they can get at the Transnet. The second issue is around the diversification. You know, one of the problems that are frustrating both Dinell, Transnet, you know, and even uh, yeah, particularly those three, I mean those two, is the issue of diversification. There is a lot that Dinell can do that not necessarily about uh, weapons. You know, there are a lot of things that they can do. They can do things like uh, cars, I mean ambulances, and all those things instead, and they can help our health system to improve the, 
They can do a lot. We also just say the same to Safcore, that the Safcore can also make desks for schools and the uh, furnitures for schools and a lot of other departmental, uh, other government department to, 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 to get cheaper prices and access those things to improve efficiency in our departments. And we will raise those issues. Therefore, I hope I'm not repeating what is on the program, but I didn't hear you saying that, uh, Mr. Mshumi. Back to you. No, thank you very much, Chair. In fact, uh, those issues have not found expression in the report, and I'm, I'm glad you have raised them. So I've noted them. I will include them into the report as recommendations for the diversification of trans of, of Denel and other issues, including the issue of the competition commission. I think uh, the issue that this is raised by Honorable Chabalala regarding the competition commission, uh, one of the issues that we are told that public public partnership cannot happen. They are saying it's uncompetitive behavior. So I think that particular meeting that we'll have with the competition commission and DTIC will help us also to deal further with this issue of the recommendation. I will include that chair, it was not included. Uh, and then in terms of the all the other issues, the other thing is that the members must always feel free to even make recommendations, even though they were not at the, at the oversight visit. Because the oversight visit is it's just a continuation of oversight. The oversight is done through a committee meeting. Then a decision is taken based on issues we hear in a meeting to go to an oversight visit. Even though a member was not in the oversight visit, but he can still make input into the report and even make recommendations it, though, through what has, has been presented to us in a committee meeting, even though even things that members are, might be aware of that Let's use this report also to make that recommendation. So it does not exclude members from making that uh, those recommendations. Yeah, no, thank you, Chair. I will, in, I will include all the issues that um, uh, have been raised by the members. Thank you. Thank you, honorable members. The report has been adopted with those amendments. Thank you so much. Can we go to the second uh, presentation by Miss Brown, Mrs. Brown, well. Hi, morning to everybody. Hope you can hear me. We can hear you loud and clear, madam. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, the song asked me just to do a presentation of a, a paper I did. It's a bit old, it's 2016, when I did it on... Um, international case studies on SOE legislation. So um, I'm just gonna give an overview of this legislation that I prepared. It was basically for the committee um, in the previous um, parliament. And uh, what they wanted was to look at, because we were waiting for this bill on the shareholder management bill to come through. So in order to prepare for that, they wanted to do, um, look at international case studies to see if they could go on a study tour to look at what other countries were doing um, with regards to legislation, with regards to SOEs. So um, at the time, they requested um, to look at countries that are perhaps um, close in proximity so that they could go to more than um, one country. So what I did was, um, I looked at the World Bank's toolkit on SOEs and looked at what countries they had as case studies there. And based on what they did, I took a selection of them, of the countries that I felt was um, more similar to South Africa. And I looked, so that came, I did um, South Korea, um, the Philippines, Malaysia, and India, because they have legislation and they also went from a low base to a high base. Um, well, they were very good countries at the, at the time. They started from a very low base. So um, that's just a bit of background. So we, my first one I looked at was South Korea. Um, not In my paper, I do give demographics, but it's a bit old, outdated, the demographics at the moment. Um, but the legislation is still relevant. So I'm just going to look at the registration and what um, they, are, they did. 
So with respect to South Korea, they first had a framework act on the management of government invested institute, institutes, which was ran from 1983 to 2007. And the main thing that that did was it devolved the power from the line ministries to include the economic board, planning board, um, and gave greater powers to the board of directors and executives. So before it was all with the line ministers and they could do, they had full control of the entities. So that led to a lot of corruption and um, some of the problems that, that we experienced. So that was the first act that they had. Then the problem with that act is that it also didn't include um, other types of government invested institutes. It was only focused on a few. So they wanted to include other types as well. So then to make it more broad and more all-encompassing, they came up with an act on the management of public institutions, which ran from 2005 and is still currently in place. So some of the highlights of that act was the classification of SOEs in public institutions. And based on the classification, it prescribes governance structures, how the um, entities would be governed. And it also limits the right of the line ministry to intervene in the management of SOEs. So in the act itself, it prescribes exactly in which um, situations the minister can intervene. So it's very clear when the minister can intervene and when it cannot intervene. It also establishes the committee on the management of public institutions. And this um, committee um, appoints directors. They are more um, with regards to governance. Can you go to the next country? The sun, thank you. Okay, so the next country I looked at was Malaysia. Malaysia doesn't specifically have a legislation in place, but they have a government link um, companies transformation program. So um, this program aims to transform the government linked companies to high performance entities and also help accelerate the country's social and economic development. So at the time when I did this, uh, Malaysia was getting to, um, to be a, um, a high income country. They wanted to be classified as a high income country and they were gearing um, to get to there by 2020. So this was the aim at the time. And uh, so, this, so this program established the, um, this committee on the GLC high performance, the P PCG, to drive the delivery of the GLCT program and it's chaired by the prime minister. So the PCG basically was to design, implement and oversee the policies to transform these GLCs into high performing companies and establish the framework to program manage and oversee the implementation of the GLCT initiatives. So even though it was a program, it was driven by the, by the prime minister of the country and they had a lot of success in, in implementing this program. Um, can you go to the next country, please? Okay, so in the Philippines, they also have the government owned and controlled corporations govern, governance act, which was implemented in 2011. And this act established the Governance Commission for GOCCs, which is the central advisory oversight and monitoring body with authority to formulate and implement policies in the active exercise of the state's ownership rights, ensures GOCC's financial viability and financial discipline through adherence to the highest standards of corporate governance. So, the, so this act also, they also classify the GOCCs according to also um, the type of of institute that they are. It establishes performance evaluation systems. It also coordinates and monitors the operations of the GOCCs. And it also reviews their functions and makes recommendations on corrections or alignments with regulatory or commercial functions. So this is similar to what South Africa wants to do because we have an issue with regards to our developmental mandate versus our commercial mandate. So this, um, so this entity that they've established will review um, like the entities and see if there's an alignment between these, um, the developmental goals and the commercial goals. And if there's not, they'll make recommendations of what can be done um, to correct that. And then they also make recommendations on suitable candidates for point of directors, which basically they provide shortlists, shortlists for direct on the appointment of directors. And then again, the CGC is situated in the office of the president. So if you already noticed from the three countries, it's always driven by the highest um, office in the, in the country. It's always the president that drives this. Um, can you go to the next country, please? Okay, then India. India itself also doesn't have a specific legislation, but they do also have policies in place with regards to um, public sector. So the Statement of Industrial Policy of 1991 included a public sector policy. And this include the 
um, one of the issues, well, some of the highlights of this policy regarding the public sector was to improve performance through the memorandum of understanding system, which allows management greater autonomy and accountability. So this is similar to South Africa, where we have the contracting, um, the performance contracting. So the memorandum of understanding is basically also an agreement between the ministry and the entity of what they're going to do for the year. Then they also have the National Common Minimum Program, with, which is a policy towards public sector entities, and it defines government's aims for what they want the public sector to achieve, enterprises to achieve. And then they have the government adopted, has adopted the Corporate Governance Code, which is formulated by Securities and Exchange Board of India, which is similar to what we have with the King Code. And then the classification of enterprise determines the degree of autonomy for central public sector enterprises that receives. So this is, again, the classifications based on, the classification is based on the income that they make or how, if they make get money from government. So they classified according to that. And depending on that, they, they, um, their governance structure is also determined. Then they also have a department of public enterprises which is the agency for all the PSEs and assisting policy formulation pertaining to the role of the PSEs in the economy, and also in laying down policy guidelines on performance improvement and evaluation, financial accounting, personal management, personnel management, and all the other related areas. So you can see this is similar to what South Africa is doing, but they seem to have more success because their entities actually um, do make money and actually make, give money back to the, to the fiscus. Whereas in South Africa's case, we don't, that does not happen here. Okay, you can go to the next slide. So those were the, the four countries that I looked at and just some of the um, cost-cutting themes or the observations with all of these countries is that you would notice the next slide, thank you, the observations from the case studies is basically that these SOE reform should ideally be driven by the head of the country. So if you look at the previous, if the four countries, you'll notice that the offices are always either headed, headed by, the, by the president or the prime minister or in the offices. So it's definitely driven from the top. Then SOEs are seen as the vehicle for economic development and attaining national outcomes, which is similar to South Africa. They define what the SOEs and classify them accordingly. So we have similar to that in the PMMA, but that's more for financial um, financial um, issues, it's not for governance really. So that's something we need to look at and in consideration of the scope of the proposed legislation. So we need to know what exactly, how far the legislation will go and what it will cover. And then the reporting lines needs to be considered in the devolution of power. So a lot of the legislation in the, in the case studies devolved power from the line ministries to include other ministries or made separate bodies to oversee governance. And then with regards to SOE reform should be reported and overseen by a high political level. This is just the reinforcement of that that's driven by the president or the prime minister. And obviously parliament should have a hand in it to keep an eye over everything. So this is just some of the observations and those were the case studies that I looked at. There was, um, they did, in that um, parliament did request to look at Africa to see what's happening in Africa. But at that time, there was nothing that we could really compare ourselves to. Um, Namibia does have legislation now that they've put in place um, with regards to SOEs. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, there's nothing that would that that we could aspire to at the moment. So um, I also looked at, at this further case studies that I looked at is Turkey and Japan and Finland in the annex, just if um, members are interested. But for um, my, what I would suggest was these, these four countries because they're close in proximity and they also started from a low base, similar to South Africa and it worked for them. So those are my recommendations, thank you. If you anybody have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, what I want to know is a presentation. Can we get questions or perhaps, because this is supposed to determine which country would love as a committee to require, to, to recommend to 
to, 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 uh, to, to go and the experience and I mean, and look at their experience in order to understand how they are dealing with these state-owned entities. Can I get the members' the contributions? Let me check who's putting the hands. Uh, Honorable Shabalala, you the first. Put your hand up. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Um, uh, really appreciate, I think, uh, the work that has been done. All I want to check, Chair, is that uh, I would have missed it. The issue about um, the dates, uh, which dates are we proposing for the study tour uh, that we ought to have? Um, but for me, from one seat as Chair, I would like to, to really welcome the presentation and the work that has been done, but also to employ the Chairperson to have communication with the um, Honorable Florik, uh, so that he understands how important this issue is, uh, that we see ourselves going through an oversight. If possible, the dates uh, the committee could put up for November or, or February next year before the SONA, so that parliament can consider around that. We really need to go out and check the SOEs that have been stabilized in these countries, but also the issue of energy so that we are able to come back to parliament and give parliament better recommendations. Because it seems that every time we're interacting with these entities, we make recommendations, we do reporting, they kind of don't take our recommendations at times to implementation. So perhaps when we do that ourselves, we come back and we employ parliament on this recommendation so that the entities could be directed uh, from the speaker's office. Thank you so much, Chair. Okay. Is there any sure. other member? Thank you, Chair. Sure. Is there any other member? Who may, yes, uh, Chair. There is a member. To... Yes, I'm Robert Gumeda. Chair, are you with Honorable me? Honorable Gumeda. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm giving sir. you a platform on our book. No, thank you, Chair. Thing hearing the the or recommendations or could be the we may learn from other countries. The, the situation here. Uh, comparing the non-comparables. Uh, our state may not be this affluent countries. So they currently don't face a state capture kind of a situation. Uh, which in fact, I think we're being trained in the sense that we are financially not viable to learn some of the things. But what's more critical for me is despite all that is the willingness of all the necessary structures, which could be the treasury, the board, the CEOs, and the entities themselves, including the department, is how far is their willingness, the preparedness, that should we be going on a study tour, some of the things that we may be, we may learn and come back with an intention to implement some of those things. How are all these people prepared to try and practice or even test some of the things that in fact we will be uh, presenting to them. Because there is nothing, Chair, that's so frustrating that you go, you come back, you expect the implementation of some of the things that in fact are easy to be achieved. I, I, I remember one day we went to Brazil we were studying something like um, food for waste. 
that uh, we're going to encourage people to collect all the garbage and whatever, come back, sell that food, and rather the, the garbage, and the person will be given a parcel or a pocket, could be of potato or pumpkins or whatever. That may be the same weight as in would have. That thing has never taken off. So all what I'm saying is, in fact, a commitment from all the sectors that I've mentioned. It's useless for us to go abroad, come back, and officials or whoever is not prepared to take. But all what I'm saying, Chair, so we have seen the recommendations. I hope some of these things will be endorsed by our study tour. Come back and be given a very sort of a, a, a plan. I, I, I had honorable them to have plans. We've presented quite a lot of plans. It's only that they don't get implemented and we keep on changing keep on changing, keep on changing up until we change no more. So all what I'm saying, Chair, I welcome the presentation in a sense. I welcome the view, the idea that let's go on a study tour, but how prepared will be politicians in this instance and many others to implement some of the things we would have learned. I'm not sure whether we're the first team that will be going abroad, or there are other teams that did go abroad, where some of the things that they presented tried, uh, or the scenario was definitely not the same. It would have been good that we failed to implement the Indonesia situation because these are two different kind of scenario, then we can't implement some of the studies we would have achieved. But for me, Chair, I'm happy with the situation, let's do that, but it depends on the preparedness of our, um, what could be the government or the department and many others, Chair. Otherwise, I'm happy with the situation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kumetia. Uh, honorable members, I think, okay. Uh, honorable Kwangwa. Chairperson, thank you. Kwangwa. Thank you very much, Chair. No, yes, no, no. I want to members, I might, I, might, I might be sounding very shaky because I'm load shedding now. Okay. Yeah, come, Honorable Kwangwa. No, no, no. I was going to say, I think, uh, I think Honorable Shabalala and Honorable Kumet have actually hit the nail on the head, Chair, to say that Honorable Chabalala, for example, is saying that perhaps in instances such as this one, so where we undertake, uh, say, committees undertake study tours uh, in order to get a better sense of what needs to be done in solving some of the problems we have in our country, especially now with respect to SOEs. It's important that whether it's through the chair, chair of chairs or the speaker of the National Assembly, that when there is failure of the recommendations which make sense to be implemented by the various entities, that the executive authority of parliament takes up the fight on our behalf to make sure that taxpayers money is not wasted where we go to these uh, study tours expensively as parliament and then come back and nothing is nothing ever gets implemented but you see it's not the failure at times i want to say it's not just the 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 different entities of government the departments that aren't, don't implement their own recommendations at times we even at fault of not implementing our own recommendations as parliament I want to make an example in 2018 when uh, uh, when uh, Jackson and Temp was still the chief whip, the, the late Jackson and Temp was still the chief whip as the chief whip. So we undertook a study tour to Ghana and then to the UK about how to improve our parliamentary systems and so on. But we came back and never implemented our own recommendations. And it's one of the things uh, that we've been saying as, as uh, some of us have, who undertook that, who participated in that study tour we're saying we're disappointed with that. So as much as we must expect the departments to implement recommendations, we should also do the same about the recommendations that affect us internally as parliament. So I agree, Honorable Gometa is right. We go on study tours, we come back, there's no implementation. We go on another study tour, we come back, we recommend, nothing ever gets done, or most of what we recommend gets ignored. 
Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kwangwa. Honorable members, let's soldier on. Our responsibility is to do oversight and recommend. The executive has to execute. Then uh, we have to just do our work. If they don't take our advice, it's up to them. We do our part. We play our role. Uh, Honorable Lamini. Uh, thanks, Chair. I think uh, I want to welcome the, 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 the report and appreciate the work that has got into uh, recommending the countries that have been uh, presented today. I think in, uh, in our country, we have a different situation, which is man-made. It's not a natural situation. We, some would call it state capture, but it's theft, really, uh, from SOEs. And out of that, we have made a decision to stop funding these SOEs, which is a very strange decision when you come to think of it. You don't stop plowing your fields because someone is stealing your produce. You deal with, with theft and continue being productive. To a certain extent, uh, the, this is some of the decisions that we've taken at Parliament as well are actually suffocating these SOEs. I'm convinced uh, all countries have gone through the same phase we are in, and they've been able to turn things around, And which is why it's important that you go on this oversight and learn from these countries, and then strengthen our own systems when we come back so that we're able to revive these SOEs. It's not going to be a foregone conclusion that the solution is to privatize SOEs. Yet we still want to, to, to argue that uh, we want a developmental state with the state leading for the development. And how is that going to happen if we've privatized everything? So at times are, we are speaking at odds from what we are doing and what we are saying that don't speak to each other. I think we, in terms of ensuring that the executive executor recommendation, it's still part of our work to make them account. And I think it would, it would not be a far-fetched idea to, 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 to make them account on something that you've recommended, because it would be some sort of a progress report to say, no, but on this issue, this is what we've agreed on, how far have we gone with it? I think in, in that front, we shouldn't, uh, give up easily. Let's continue. Things will turn around ultimately, but we must push. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Lamini. Honorable members, I don't know, Honorable Chavalala, whether it's a legal hand. No, Chairperson, thank you so much. I think you covered me with your statement around us doing our job, but also for us to understand that there are three layers of arms of state. We are legislature. So it must not be almost as if that we feel that, you know, we are helpless. There's nothing that we're going to do. We'll go. Well, we just don't want to go for the sake of it. I think that's the point. So that even the public understands uh, our reasoning around this issue. Uh, we, we're not just doing it because it's something that's there to be done, whether we're not sure whether they implement no, we must do our job, go to parliament, recommend to parliament what needs to happen. And that's where we need to be uh, really clear about so that we don't uh, confuse uh, these matters about whether executive, uh, whether treasury, we must lobby treasury to do that. No, 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 no. That's not how it's done. I think something that I wanted just for us to put it into context, but you did uh, uh, cover me, Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Shavalala. Honorable members, uh, at this point, I don't know whether, oh, Honorable, uh, is there any issue you want to raise, uh, Bramwen and uh, Tsang? Um, yeah, just on my part with regards to Mr. Gobedi's comment about they didn't have state capture. Some of these countries did um, also have, um, also had issues with um, collusion where the, actually the state and the public enterprises work together to um, make the companies bigger when they didn't actually have the money and they didn't need to. So there was corruption as well. 
So this legislation also looked at um, their legislation that was specifically in um, South Korea. So the, these countries also did um, have state gap, well, their version of um, corruption and collusion within the SOEs. So this legislation was also to drive, um, to make get rid of that as well. So um, they mustn't think that other countries don't have corruption and collusion within the SOEs. They all have. So the, they all um, had to fight that just as we're doing at the moment. It might not have been as big as ours, but they, it did happen on, on, in other countries as well. Um, yeah, that's just my comment. Okay. Uh, yeah, where there is capitalism, there is stealing. Capitalism always steal. They steal even to the working class by exploiting it. Uh, let's go to Honorable Omino, oh, Mr. Muchumi. There is a question that was raised by Honorable Shabalala about the dates and the office of the chair of chairs to sort of uh, endorse our recommendation because we're not only recommending to go to a, one of those countries, but we also uh, wish uh, to have particular, I mean, a, a date, uh, a date, there must be a target date as to when are we living, when are we going to do this? It's either end of the year in November or towards the end of the year or at the beginning of the year, February before the opening of parliament, those are the recommendations. Muchumi have to breathe on this. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, I can... Hello, Muchumi. Tisang. Tisang. Recording stopped. Uh, honorable members, the song disappeared at the beginning. I think it's low shedding. Hi, Che. Um, yeah. From what I know, of when the song spoke to me, he told me yesterday that the third, the fourth quarter um, program for Parliament wasn't hasn't been um, circulated as yet, so he didn't have specific dates. He was waiting for the um, the fourth term program to come out so that he could um, do the program as well. But we haven't received it as yet, so I don't think he'll be able to give dates as yet until the program um, has been it's finalized. finalized. Yes. Okay. Okay. That is it, honourable members. Uh, in that note, honourable members, I think. Let's see, get uh, Tisang to finalize. I think by next week, the, the, the program will be finalized and then we'll be in a position to have a date. After immediately we come from the recess, let me say next week, immediately we come from the recess. The first week when we come from the recess, we will be getting the program. And the... Uh, um, suggesting that we close this meeting for now and adjourn uh, until when we back from the recess, one of the members. And I thank you for attending this meeting, uh, seeing you and wish you a good week of chair working in your constituency. Hello, sir. The chair. Chair Person, before you close, may I just make a comment, yeah. please? Yes. It's Farad Isak. Chairperson, yeah, just uh, uh, listening to uh, the program issue, uh, you know, we should just bear in mind that obviously we've put the midterm budget, uh, which is scheduled uh, for October. And then, of course, we, you know, during the month of November, with all the BRR reports that are going to have to come through, 
the program, in my opinion, is going to be pretty tight. But I just wanted to mention and add that comment that perhaps the Secretariat, uh, I suppose when the program comes out and together with yourself, Chairperson, you, you know, then you'll interrogate and make the best decision on behalf of the committee. Thank you for the okay. uh, opportunity. Thanks, Chair. Okay. I think they, they will look at all that, including the Chair of Chairs. Uh, honorable members, thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, Chair. Long live the Chair. Bye, Mr. Isaac. Bye, Chair. Bye. Bye.